circle six. All right, so half step, circle six. All right, big half step, small one, all right? There. Now, if he finds me at this point, I want him to finish. All right? Okay, he goes, he misses. Now, full retreat. And yeah, I would have taken a four there. Try that, ready? Dip in, good. All right, who's training this guy? All right. Ready? One, two, and in. Ready? Oh, see? Now he wasn't ready for that, but he got it because I let him be ready for it, right? He didn't move back again, right? So, it's one, two, right? One, two, all the time. Okay? Okay, why? So, you see, he wants to stand still, right? So, come here. Running out of space. All right. So if he wants to stand still, just slow her down. And now I let him catch it, but you didn't really catch it. It's only your imagination. Right yeah. now, take a step. Boom. Yes. Okay. So now we move. See? Oh, a little half step. Good. So now I'm mimicking the footwork pattern just with movement. And that foot pulls back and there. Good. Do it again. Ready? Good. That was a pull and not over here. Here. Ready? Get this here. One, two, three. All right? So, why do I like that action? Um, it comes from the Italians, particularly it comes from Andrea Magro, who's the big coach, or used to be the big coach in um, Italy, worked with Fizzali, Trinini, and all those people. And if you watch Fizzali, Trinini, and uh, Durando and Ben and, and all those those women, they're always they're here, moving, moving. Oh, early disruption, right? They find the blade early. If it's not there, boom, they take a big step back. If they miss that one, they take another step back. So it's totally control in terms of what they're doing. It's active defense. They never just retreat, retreat, wait. They're always looking for what's going on out there. So it's top, top, top. They're always finding that moment and. The Italians have this great guard position up here that I like when we use this because it's, whoop, there's my circle six, right? Whoop, there's second, right? I missed that one, I can wrap it up into a four, make my repost. So there's all sorts of variations you can do with this, but this is how you add the half step in defensively. Question? Yeah, they're in tears all the time. It's an odd little position, but it works for them. Now you went to second row and eight? I do, yeah, from this, from this position here, you know, and maybe it's affectation right now, I'm not certain, but I, I'm really, I'm loving Seikon recently. So I've been working with Seikon, um, with a lot of my fencers, and the reason I like it is this, come on, go. Okay, if he's down here, I take Seikon like this, all right? I have a lot of places I can go. I have still good control with my fingers through Seikon, right? I can make the feint, right? Or I could bring it up over the top to the flick, right? I could take Seikon, I could come off of it here, right? So there's a lot of places I can go out of that Seikon. You can do the same with eight, it's just eight's more of a position parry, Seikon's more of power. So if I just want to smash the blade, yeah, Seikon's where I go. Okay, so defensively, here's what, here's what you can do. And you can do this with any uh, combination of, of parries you want. Uh, let's do six to eight, right? So he takes half step six, he misses it, takes full retreat, cuts the line in eight, makes the repo. Okay? Take six to seven. Four. Right? Take uh, six to four. Four. Right? Take four on the half step. Right? Circle four on the retreat. Good. Right? Now, be careful. Take the half step and then start again with the back foot. And that's the key. Because if you go here, here, you're really just doing a retreat. It's got to be one, two. You've got to pull yourself back on that second retreat. Okay? Okay, so here we go. So, we're moving. Good. Step. Half. Good. See, it's an easy lesson, but it's precise. So, here we go. Take uh, four on the half. That was seven, by the way. Ready? <laughs> Take four. Okay, now I'm teaching here, because I'm going to let him find my blade. Take full retreat seven. And in. Good. Why are you reading over here? Here's my target. Okay? Good. Take this here. And one. Oh, that's all again. Ready? Half step. Seven. Nope. You see it? Yeah. Retreat. So it's double movement with the back leg. One. Retreat. Yes. Okay? 
So by using this, you can teach the student to find the blade early. And I love when we pair the posts on the on that person's start of their attack. It catches them off guard. It, it allow it's safer for you. And when I teach that, I teach it way out in front. So it's really an early extending parry, and then I step back and bring the parry in a little bit deeper. All right? Now you can build on that. You can go one, two, three, right? You can change um, the parries, you can change the repost, you can delay things. Okay? So this is kind of fun to play with. So take, uh, let's take circle six. All right? So it's here, here, let me start, let me start, let me start, let me start, and then quick retreat parry. See? And now he's got to like, so he's like, ba, pa, and he commits. So by pausing there just for a little bit, just a tiny fraction of a minute, they commit to the finish and take that quick parry finish. So you can play with the timing of the parry, the timings of the retreats, that sort of thing. All right, so get uh, with partner and just kind of play. A little half step, retreat, and uh, you can choose any combination of parries you want and see how it works and see how it feels and then it leads itself to a tactical application, all right? And the tactic is false parry parry, all right? So uh, why are false parries so important? Because false parries show your opponent where you want them to finish, okay? If, if I'm going backwards and I'm doing a circle six, I sure as heck know that if they see it and I can make it big enough and slow enough, they're going to make a disengage around it. Well, that's great for me because now I know where they are, right? And as long as I know where they are, I can take that second parry and make the big So you can take this technical drill and apply it tactically all the time. And then again, it's what I call active defense. I am not just being passive. I'm not just waiting for the finish of the, of the attack. I am creating and stealing the right of way from the other person. And to me, that's really important in foil. All right, the other question was, well, geez, how many of you had problems going back foot, back foot, front foot? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's an unusual footwork combination. So how do you teach it from the very beginning? I start with little kids, all right? And, and, and we do this all the time in our club. And um, you know, so I just have the kids get on guard. So like everybody get on guard. Okay. All I want you to do is just do what I do. That's it. Right? So all I'm doing is working independent of the move. Random. I don't care what it is. I just make them do this all the time. Then I add in the second part of it. Oh, oh. Right? Once they get a little bit more stable, I go step, step. Because I do that too. Right? I go step, step again. Or I go step, retreat. Or I go here, advance. And you just saw half step, advance at the beginning of it. So by doing this footwork with the kids in group lessons, they become accustomed to independently moving their limbs based on what they want to do. All right? If you want to take, take it to the extreme level, for higher level, I would say high school kids, um, the Italians, uh, there's this video floating out there somewhere in ether, ether space. Um, of the Italian kind of plyometric agility program. It is killer. Killer. I would challenge any of your high school students to go through the whole program and be successful. I mean, it is things like, you know. That's so good. That's so good. Yeah, it's like, sure, yeah, oh, oh, absolutely. Stuff like this and, and, and arm coordinations. And if you watch the Italians at international competitions warming up, I swear to God, you see them walking. You know, they're doing all sorts of ballistic arm motions and warming up. And really, they've been doing it from, young, from a young age, and it's all designed to um, create independent ballistic movement on each of the limbs. And, and it's, it's fascinating to find that video. It's floating around somewhere out there. So if you start asking around, somebody's going to have a copy of it. And it's great for coordination. So anything like that with kids, I do um, all the time to teach the independent movement. So that's how I start the whole thing. It's not rocket science. You know, you just take the skill, you break it down to a little kid level, and, and you just do it over and over and over again until they, they learn it. Okay. Um, so defensively, that half step becomes, you know, parry, early parry, repost, or early parry, second parry, repost. And you can add as many levels to that as you want. You know, it could be like one, two, whoop, three, right? Or you can throw in a stop kick. You could go one, whoop, whoop, and get out. Right? You miss the first one, you create the opportunity for the stop hit, and you go. So there's all sorts of variations that you can do. You just have to be 
in what you're thinking and remember what your intent is. Everything has to have purpose. All right. So now let's talk.